Welcome to KubeCon. We have the honor to have one of the first talks here on Monday morning. Uh, so glad that uh, a couple of you came and are not sleeping in uh, or still traveling because I think um, the majority will probably still uh, be in transit or so. Uh, we took our liberty and came in on the weekend. So glad that you can be here with us today. Uh, we will be talking about uh, the platform at Deutsche Bahn with Crossplane and Crossplane's provider ROCD, um, a project which we are running now for a uh, good three years. And um, we want to share a bit the, uh, the challenges we had when building the, the platform with Crossplane and with ROCD, uh, with the integration we came up with and um, the solution and how you can benefit as well if you want. Um, my name is Jan Wilius. Uh, I'm from Germany, Berlin. Uh, I'm a platform architect at Accenture. I've been tinkering with open source for uh, my whole life, uh, starting with Kubernetes 2014 15, uh, with the first projects. And for a couple of years now, I'm doing cross plane, and um, I will. We'll happily go on uh, about that in more detail, what we have built uh, in the past time. Meanwhile, uh, my colleague Dennis will tell you more about the platform. Yeah. Hi, my name is Dennis. I'm from, from Frankfurt, Germany. And um, yeah, I have over five years experience in building and running platforms and cloud environments. And um, yeah, I'm working at Deutsche Bahn for more than two years. Um, first of all, uh, if it's okay, I would like to give a short introduction what Deutsche Bahn is. Um, maybe it's not so well known here in North America, but um, if you ever visited Germany um, and take, uh, taking a train there, it's, uh, the chances are higher that uh, this was with Deutsche Bahn. So um, Deutsche Bahn is uh, not only the so uh, Germany's largest uh, railway operator is also a major um, player in Europe's transport sector. <clears throat> the, uh, the areas of operations uh, include, among others, uh, passengers and uh, freight services on railway. And with the um, strong rail strategy, Deutsche Bahn aims to uh, significantly increase um, traffic um, on rail. That means bringing traffic to rail. Um, as you may imagine, this uh, will also include uh, modernization and digitalization of uh, railway operation where our um, platform came into the picture. <clears throat> So, with that, with that being said, um, let's take a look uh, our, um, at the current state of our, our platform. We have one platform team with around 11 uh, developers and DevOps engineers. Um, we're currently managing over 50 Kubernetes clusters, uh, different, <coughs> over uh, 50 Kubernetes clusters. Um, Backed by AWS AKS service, we have 50 different um, developer teams using our platform, and we are allowing these developers to using over 45 different kinds of AWS services um, via self-service. In regard to Argo CD, we have currently uh, 100 different app projects with uh, thousand uh, application um, and this application interfacing with 180 different repositories. Um, at the monitoring perspective, we are, um, our monitoring set consists of uh, Grafana, Mimir, and Loki. Uh, we have 48 different Grafana organization and managing seven, uh, seven, 17 terabytes of uh, metric logs and 16 terabytes of, uh, of logs. Um, in Crossplane, we are currently have um, 
54 compositions, um, which um, result in over 2,000 lines of code, but uh, most of them are <coughs> generated, uh, generated by Helm, which, uh, um, which we use to, to, to provide our um, cross-plane package. And um, we also have about 10,000 managed resources. This means we um, handling uh, uh, over 10,000 external resources like um, AWS, uh, S3 buckets, or applications in Argo CD with our platform. <clears throat> that was a short introduction into our platform. So, but which components are making a platform? First of all, we have uh, observability, very important part of the platform. That means uh, we need to make sure uh, we see metrics, uh, we get our logs, and uh, also tracing is an important part. Um, then each application needs uh, credentials, so you, make, uh, you have to think about uh, where you can store your credentials and, where you can and um, how you can receive your credentials, and also uh, infrastructure management, that means um, do you want um, how you can um, yeah, deploy your infrastructure um, with the platform? Traffic management means um, how you can reach your application. Um, and the um, next part is deploy. So how, uh, how can you deploy um, your application on the platform? Also important parts are compliance. So that means um, we are a, a large company with um, a lot of rules. So you make sure that uh, compliance is part of your platform as well as security. So uh, Deutsche Bahn, for example, have critical infrastructure with the railway network. And uh, we have uh, specific requirements, uh, requirements. And so we have um, yeah, an important part with, with compliance and security on our platform. Yeah, with this being said, I would hand over to Jan to explain you more uh, what components we use in our platform. Thanks. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, with uh, what Dennis uh, said already, a pretty important part are the dependencies of an application. So how do we manage um, compute, storage, or network, uh, all these uh, parts, and um, with that, I want to introduce the platform API, where we basically go from the bottom to the top. Uh, at the very bottom, we do have our service providers, which offer us several uh, features, uh, like, for example, on uh, those cloud providers, compute, storage, networking, messaging, et, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's usually, while well, they do have a very, very large API surface, that's not usually they don't offer everything what is needed. Uh, so um, we do have other APIs which are uh, very important for application uh, management and deployment. Um, for example, obviously the Kubernetes API itself, um, the Git API, uh, in, in, in this case it's GitLab or uh, a policy engine for, for uh, example, here, Styra, Argo CD, um, Grafana, just the, it's not, not an exclusive list. Um, but just to give you an idea that there are many, many different APIs uh, involved when deploying uh, applications, or not like only deploying, but managing applications. And, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and those need to be integrated somehow because um, if the product teams or service teams uh, want to actually kind of after the first POC or after I don't know, uh, after a migration, want to, do, want to deploy their applications. You have to be like, um, uh, I don't know, um, a, a major genie to understand all those uh, APIs. Uh, well, Kubernetes, let alone, is, is very complex by now, so very complicated. And um, the platform team, which owns the layer over the service providers, uh, set out to abstract those a little bit well, abstract and integrate, obviously. So uh, with the goal to make it easier for applications team to actually use and manage their applications. So 
to integrate all those service providers, but also to give them uh, metrics and uh, all this kind of nice things uh, which, which you expect. Um, another stakeholder uh, of this platform layer, which is only depicted here in green, is uh, what Dennis mentioned, the compliance department or security, um, where now, since we, the platform team providing um, a single or like, yeah, a single uh, API abstraction layer on top, we can, uh, we, we do have a very good insights on how people are using our platform because we are providing a live API, which is like a request response. Um, we can make some defaults, for example, a famous example is the S3 bucket. So if anyone provisions an S3 bucket, it will be um, per default non-public uh, to kind of not accidental leak some data and so on. Um, but um, we can also uh, integrate into CMDB systems, for example, because Kubernetes as the uh, layer here, we will go into a bit more detail soon, uh, is, is the kind of the abstraction layer. Um, we do have a database for, for querying all of our uh, infrastructure. And uh, obviously on top is our users and those users, well, since it's uh, Kubernetes abstraction, they can go with all this Kubernetes tooling which is available. So example, they can describe their stuff in, uh, in help charts or in customize or uh, even in, in plain JSON manifest and use curl or um, with the client Go SDK available, they can also uh, write their own automation in, in Go or any other language which has um, Kubernetes uh, SDKs available. Uh, another thing is the GitOps today. Obviously, here at ArgoCon, uh, GitOps is the main uh, topic, and I, I'm not sure how, how many years already the ArgoCon is um, part of the co-located KubeCon, um, but it's, it's a thing, and uh, especially for production environments, we are using GitOps quite heavily. And with this approach here, um, mainly using the, uh, the Kubernetes uh, layer as an uh, API framework, we can uh, extend GitOps not only to application like pure Kubernetes uh, objects, but to kind of all kind of objects which are part of the Kubernetes API. So for example, um, we, since we can provision S3 buckets via the Kubernetes API, we might as well provision them via GitOps. And we will go into this kind of uh, glue layer uh, in, in a couple of uh, minutes. And we can build our, uh, um, uh, a website on top, like a portal. Uh, we are using Backstage for that, but uh, in, in the end you could use uh, whatever you want. So Argo CD and Crossplan are a perfect match. Uh, I don't think I need to do, introduce Argo CD here quite uh, extensively. Um, Crossplane maybe. Uh, has, who has heard of Crossplane before here? Are there? Okay, maybe half of it. So basically, uh, I've been talking already a bit about um, Kubernetes objects and how we can extend Kubernetes objects uh, to not only have this core, like I believe it's maybe around 60 objects in a vanilla Kubernetes installation by now, but extend it with our own objects. And that is exactly what Crossplane does. Um, it, it hops on Kubernetes and extends it with its own objects. So you can store whatever objects you kind of like or uh, want to create in the Kubernetes API. And um, with the service providers, that's exactly what we are doing. We are mirroring the external APIs into the Kubernetes ecosystem. So um, for example, in the case of, um, of AWS, we are mirroring uh, the AWS API surface into the group version kind Kubernetes uh, YAML, if you wish so. so uh, it's a very kind of standard way of accessing um, different service providers because they all look the same. So for example, if you take um, a, a Kubernetes deployment, it has a, a API group at the top is, um, is apps, a version is v1, the kind or the object is uh, deployment, and then you have a metadata name for like whatever name it is or should have, and then um, in the spec, you get to describe what exactly is this object. And with 
um, with the cross-band provider ecosystem, for example, with the provider AWS, we get to describe um, what this S3 object or S3 kind exactly is made of. So obviously it has a name too and then some other restrictions like a location, uh, a size, uh, and a retention policy and so on and so forth. So Argo CD is a perfect fit for managing this front layer on how to access the, uh, the platform. And um, here I wanna like describe a bit on how we, how we go about this integration. So uh, from, from left we have our cross-plane like ecosystem and on the right we have the service provider API. It's kind of a bit uh, 90 degrees now because the service provider are on the right side. Um, but I want to uh, describe here and make it clear that um, the mirroring part, so we do approach just external APIs with, um, with the provider ecosystem. And uh, in the case of Argo, that's the HTTP API. So the provider Argo CD, which we wrote as part of the uh, project and we are still uh, maintaining and um, uh, uh, developing features for it. It basically, it basically mirrors the Argo CD API into the cross-plane ecosystem. So you might wonder, okay, but I can already create Kubernetes objects and they are in Argo CD, like um, with the Kubernetes API, because Argo CD uses Kubernetes as the database, if you want. So I can more or less connect directly to the database and create an Argo CD application or an um, in, in Argo CD project because those are the two types uh, which Argo CD has as a native or uh, their own registered Kubernetes uh, types. Um, so there are two ways of uh, connecting or of, of managing Argo CD or approaching Argo CD and it's not super, they are not like uh, fully 100% the same things which you, where you can configure for example the same things. So for one thing, you need the HTTP API. Other things you can do with both APIs. And for uh, other parts, I think you only can do that via the Kubernetes API. So with the provider Argo CD, um, we, uh, we wrote a software which mirrors the missing pieces basically into, back into Kubernetes. So that's exactly <coughs> um, why why we are um, why we wrote that because uh, part of that was our journey was when we started Argo CD was at version 1.5 or 1.6 or so it was uh, like two or three years ago and it didn't have dedicated objects for for anything so there was like a config map which has a huge list of uh, of entries all in, in, in strings and blobs and those were the repositories which Argo CD manage, or which, which are their upstream Git repositories. So, for example, if you wanted to add another uh, a repository, you need to more or less check out the config map from Kubernetes, make your um, adjustments, and then push it back to Argo CD, uh, to Kubernetes. And this obviously is uh, super, uh, is, is not very tenant safe and or very hard to make tenant safe and uh, it's prone for errors. Uh, other parts uh, uh, are um, a bit uh, for the security, that's a bit of a cross-plane um, uh, own thing because a lot of the things which we store in Argo CD, uh, for example, credentials to uh, Git repositories or credentials to connect to the Kubernetes clusters, both of them Argo CD needs to have. Um, we, we, we want to obviously store encrypted and not only encrypted when connecting via uh, HTTP, um, but also in the database in, at rest. So since Argo CD uses Kubernetes as the database, if you have all this stuff in, in secrets, um, you're good. But for the integration layer for cross-plane, when you kind of uh, dis describe your own um, APIs and make them easier for the, for the customers to use. A lot of these things is not uh, in, in secrets because that's just plain Kubernetes objects like deployments or anything. They are just 
not uh, encrypted address. And um, with the provider Argo CD, we are able to integrate it and, and exactly store the credential information or leave them as secrets and, um, and, and have them encrypted at rest. So that was a major, a major, um, a major plus for us. And I want to go into two use cases because we only have a couple of minutes now. Um, one is the uh, cluster registration of Kubernetes clusters. So for example, if we uh, want, if we create a new Kubernetes cluster, we want to have it automatically registered at uh, Argo CD. And what's the standard way to connect to a Kubernetes cluster is, uh, is a kube config. So when you create um, a Kubernetes cluster at, at uh, somewhere, it doesn't matter, even the V cluster or the cluster API or at one of the cloud providers, you get back a, a kube config. And uh, unfortunately, Argo CD doesn't or read a, a standard kube config. You need a, a dedicated uh, um, object in Argo CD, which has uh, a few parts here uh, different and a few parts there different, but doesn't uh, use a, a standard kube config. But a standard kube config has all the information in there which you need to register the cluster. So with provider Argo CD, basically, you can create a any cluster and reference the kube config and it will create the corresponding connection at Argo CD and you have the, the cluster registered and, and connected with all this information. So that was just merged recently and is, uh, it's very cool for, for, um, well, for integrating this stuff. Uh, another thing uh, we, we do have is when we onboard new applications, so for example, uh, a new application team wants to create a new microservice, and then uh, you go on and say, okay, well, I need uh, a couple of, of things at different APIs. For example, I need a compute environment, which might or may or may not be Kubernetes, uh, the CI CD integration, which uh, is uh, in our case the GitLab integration. Um, the GitLab runner, then the, uh, the Git repository, obviously, and then uh, finally the Argo CD repository application, cluster registration, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously I want to have, ideally I want to start not from scratch, but from a blueprint which already has all those modules and in this case I believe uh, Java um, jars in there which connect to the rest of my company's uh, ecosystem. So with Crossplane, I'm able to exactly have this high-level object. In this case, it's, uh, well, standard Kubernetes on the lower left, also deployable via GitOps. Um, and then in, uh, like after this dotted line, the platform basically fans out and goes to all these different uh, APIs and creates the objects and manages the dependencies and manages, for example, uh, very important parts for the um, connection of those things, the, the updating when they, um, uh, the tokens run out, uh, et cetera, et cetera. A um, couple of challenges I want to go into is that there are missing HTTP APIs in Argo CD, which we would like to use, but we cannot use uh, for now. Uh, for example, onboarding the accounts that's still uh, uh, I think it's, a, it's not a config map, but it's a Kubernetes secret, but it basically it's just a list of, of all those accounts. It would be very nice for us to have a dedicated HTTP API, or in the other case, to have a dedicated Kubernetes object as the backend. Um, for us, it's also a bit unclear whether the, what, what goes into the Argo CD HTTP API, or a dedicated Kubernetes object, or a Kubernetes object which has a a label attached to it and then is read by Argo CD, so a bit of Argo CD interna. Uh, it's not quite clear. And since uh, we do only have 30 seconds, I want to go to the last slide and um, as a bit of a summary, provide that with the provider Argo CD, we connected uh, one of the most important parts of our platform uh, into, into the rest of the platform. And with open sourcing the provider, um, we do get contributions and um, um, yeah, a, a bit more a widespreading of, of, of our approach from other companies. And with that, awesome. we're done. Thanks.
Yeah. Thanks. So, um, so we have a few minutes for questions. Um, uh, there's a mic up there, or if you raise your hand, I can run over to you. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we have a few minutes here. There's a question. Uh, there's, you can stand up on the mic there, and then you'll you'll go next. Hi, I have one uh, single question. Can I integrate Argo City with the Terraform instead of cross-plane for infrastructure as a code? Did you understand? No, oh, sorry. Can sorry, you, can you? Uh, yeah. Me? So she's asking if um, oh, you, you want to. Just one question about the Argo City integrating with the Terraform instead of cross-plane as an infrastructure as a code. Is it possible? Uh, I believe so. Uh, we chose um, cross-plane for our integration layer because it provides us with a safe service API, whereas in Terraform you don't have that, at least in the open source version. Um, I do know that it's possible to integrate Terraform into cross-plane via different ways. Um, however, I'm not sure about Argo CD. It's possible, so I'll try it out. It's possible to integrate Terraform uh, with Argo CD. It's also an option you can you can choose. Is that an extension? Yeah, it's an extension. Oh. Thank you. Go. Hey, uh, I have actually two questions. Uh, first one: uh, If a new API comes out, how long does it take you to expose it to application developers? Uh, do you mean a new application of uh, internal at uh, Deutsche Bahn, so for example, or uh, do you mean a new object at, at Argo CD? So, so say like S3 added a new capability and your developers need to use it, but you have like the intermediate layer in between? All right, okay, yeah, that's a good question. So for, um, in the case of, Ar of, of AWS you described, there's um, a code generation pipeline. So AWS has this project called ACK, which is the AWS controller for Kubernetes. And Crossplane has the provider AWS, which is basically the same, but not uh, from AWS. So AWS has a code generation pipeline, which generates code for both of these projects, uh, which are both Kubernetes controller. So as soon as that is available at their AWS uh, models, you could go and uh, um, generate the new uh, extension or the new uh, fields in, in the API, so and then and use them. For Argo CD, it's similar because when Argo CD releases a new version with an API extension um, via the provider Kubernetes, so via direct access, you would immediately have them, but you're not more or less type safe. You're still in this kind of string world. With the provider Argo CD, um, we did have a contribution from SAP. Um, where they use GoVerter to more or less um, use the uh, Go objects or the structs and types from Argo CD directly into uh, the um, provider AWS. So it's uh, provider Argo CD, sorry. It's not r like a full code generation approach, but it's very close. So it, um, it doesn't, you don't need to have this copy and paste boilerplate for that kind of stuff. So. In the question um, of, of time, I would say depends on how fast you need it. The way uh, is clear on how to do it. And then um, if you get this um, uh, pull request merge, then it could be just uh, in a single day, more or less. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and one more question. Uh, if you go uh, a few slides back, uh, how do you propagate between different uh, like providers? Say you need to create security group uh, and then you need to send the security group ID into the applications to specify like key and I configure something. So it's not within like a single provider, but with cross provider communication. Uh, yeah, so uh, Crossplane has a feature called Compositions, which basically allows you to use, in the simplest form, uh, um, templating to connect those things, uh, like a Helm chart, for example, but to compose many different objects into an, in a single easier one, which is, for example, the uh, application blueprint I showed you. That's just like new application, uh, type Java, and that's it. Um, and, and that basically we use extensively to, um, to abstract the, the infrastructure part. And this is cross planes feature, right? It's a, it's okay, a cross feature. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so cross plane has to be installed on a management cluster Correct. How do you provision that management cluster? Oh, yeah. So the question was uh, cross plane needs uh, a management cluster. 
uh, to, to be usable since it's an API. So it's, um, it's not a client-only approach, like for example Terraform, but uh, it, it offers an eye. And the question is, how do we provision the management cluster? So it's uh, a bootstrapping problem or challenge. And basically, we, what we did was we seeded uh, first with the kind cluster from a local uh, instance. Then from the kind cluster, uh, we created with, via compositions a cluster at, uh, in our case, AWS. And then we basically migrated the state into this cluster so it manages itself. Uh, because the state is at AWS, so the cluster is at AWS. We only connect with it via client side. We are able to make this kind of, um, of dance to, to have a cluster self-managed. A control plane cluster self-manages its, its own, basically. Thank you. Um, I, I think you, before you mentioned you uh, were also using Backstage, is that right? Yep. I was just wondering, for, in that kind of use case where a user creates a new application, like where does Backstage stop and where does Crossplane start? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, we do have many different um, uh, levels of knowledge in the company. So, um, for example, the tech savvy crowd, they are using direct API uh, access quite heavily and extensively, so they are not uh, afraid of, of using Kubernetes objects and so on and so forth. But we do also have um, folks who are, uh, they, they just need to develop like a, a small, very simple software and they don't want to learn all this kind of uh, stuff on the, on the bottom. And um, for that, we do have a scaffolder in Backstage where you basically can create those uh, Kubernetes objects, which are then deployed via Argo CD to the cross-plane platform cluster. Um, basically, if I go back here, is um, here on the top right. So your interface is a graphical one, and you scaffold, that's a, a, a plugin in, in Backstage, uh, which basically allows you to scaffold uh, Kubernetes objects. Okay, and Crossplane is still involved from that point yes, on? Yes, Crossplane is still involved as, uh, as a lower uh, level, but they, uh, some, some users prefer to not directly interact with this kind of low abstraction. Thank you. Hey, we got time. One, one more quick question for the next talk. Hey guys, I was just wondering, um, you talked a lot about self-service model providing uh, cloud provider infrastructure for your end users. How do you gate against somebody provisioning a thousand S3 buckets or, you know, running up the bill to an extraordinary amount? Uh, yeah. So the question is, how do we gate or, or uh, secure ourselves uh, against uh, someone accidentally or on purpose creating a thousand uh, S3 buckets um, as a platform team? And um, so in the case of, uh, of production system, it's very clear. We, we don't hand out credentials to this production account, so there's no direct AWS access or uh, access to those, any of those APIs, uh, uh, really. Um, so the only way to approach those systems is via the, uh, the platform API, which is the Kubernetes-style API in Crossplane. And with that, we get access to a variety of um, policy uh, uh, mechanisms and control mechanisms on how many objects can be created. A simple one is in, in Kubernetes is the, the RBAC stuff, but you don't have things like you're only allowed to create S3, uh, five or, or 10 S3 buckets. Um, but that uh, we can do with, um, with add-ons for the Kubernetes API. In our case, that's OPA and Styra. So we kind of have safeguards on, um, if you want, so on the shift left approach so that the API itself already says no if you want to create more than a thousand buckets. But obviously those guardrails can be uh, created at, at, at some APIs um, at the service provider, for example, I believe at uh, AWS you could uh, have some internal mechanisms to, uh, to control that as well. I'm uh, sure at others, for example, not. So if, for example, in, in Argo CD, there's no internal mechanism which, uh, so you are kind of dependent on those shift left approaches and before things. So yeah, in, in our case, it's, um, it's OPA, more or less. Thank you. Thanks. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.